Good morning, St. Columbans. I hope you are well. I'm Margaret Griffin, and I'm here to talk about Stirring the Waters, a ministry I've recently become involved with. You've probably heard of us. We work on ourselves, and we work with a congregation to act against racial injustice. My path here has been a long one. I'm a Southerner. My great-great-great-grandfather owned slaves. This family history didn't really come into focus for me, odd as that sounds, until I went to college and experienced a revelation in a course taught by Joel Williamson when I read his book, A Rage for Order. He wrote a question on the blackboard on the first day of class. Do black people have to make it in the United States the same way as white people do? This was 1988. By the end of the semester, I had an answer to that question, and I also knew that in order for people, my people, to own slaves, they'd had to view them as less than human. And I realized that some strain of this belief, call it white superiority, resided in my home. It had been handed down as real as a piece of family silver, except it was in the air we breathed and it was all around us. So what did I do? I fled to liberal Washington, where everybody took their lack of racism for granted. Nobody made offensive jokes. No one spoke with derision about this group or that group. And this comfort, I didn't have to question why there was not one black person in the marketing firm where I worked in the year 2000. But I was beginning to grasp why my one dear black friend who attended our wedding that same year abandoned our friendship not long after. But here's another story. In North Carolina, I grew up having a black housekeeper in our home almost daily. Della had worked for my grandparents since the late 1940s and for my parents since 1960. My mother had a chronic illness and it's not an exaggeration to say that Della was like a mother to my brother and me. Every year, she took election day off to work at the polls. This was Greensboro, home of the sit-ins at the Woolworth lunch counter. In 1986, slightly more than 20 years since Della's right to vote had to be federally enforced by the Voting Rights Act, it's my turn to register. My mother is in her bed. Della is sitting on the bed next to her, and I'm on the bed too, sitting across from Della. This is where Della registers me to vote. As she fills out paperwork on a clipboard, she asks me, which party do I want to join? And when I hesitate, because this is something else I'd never thought much about, she tells me which one to join. My mother, who did not belong to that party, quietly nodded her approval and I have never changed that affiliation. I share all that so you have a vision of two worlds, a racist world and what I've been referring to lately as a recovering racist world. That's what I feel like. You can't have a history like our US history and my Southern history and not have to work at this every day. It won't be cured without effort and it requires community. I invite you to take the Sacred Ground course. Join us for an informal conversation on race some Sunday. Read a book on the issue with the ministry you're a part of. Or get involved with Stirring the Waters. No one is perfect. We're all flawed. But we're all made in the image of God, no matter where we are on this journey of recovery. This is good and joyful and holy work.